everybody one here from language academy guys welcome back to another video in this video we are going to look at the writing module this video is going to be a master class each and everything you need to know about the writing module is going to be there in this video we'll have a look at the templates the structure and the strategies you need to use in all the task types when it comes to pt writing what i'll be doing is i'll be sharing my screen i'll take you through um, the different tasks in the writing module the strategies, the simple answers and the common mistakes which a lot of students do make. Plus, we'll have a look at what other areas do you get points from in the writing module. And at the end, I'll give you a practice plan so that you have something concrete to practice and to monitor and track your progress. Let's get going. I'll share my screen. I've got everything ready for you. Just make sure you pay attention and writing you can get it out of the way if you follow what i'll be telling you in this video first of all in writing you have only two different question types but actually in writing you get points from six different question types two from the writing itself one from reading which are your reading writing blanks three from listening which are summarized spoken text listening fill in the blanks and write from dictation and remember this thing writing is not the most important area for the writing module i'll repeat again the two question types which you have in writing are not very, very crucial for the writing module. Rather than that, you have to focus more on the listening and the reading part because those two areas are going to contribute heavily towards the writing module. But in this video, we'll have an in-depth focus on the writing module. So let me share my screen. As soon as you finish your speaking module, you will jump onto the writing module. And this is the first question of the writing module. The very first question of the writing module is summarize written text. What happens over here? You will get a passage on your screen. The passage can be different paragraphs or it can be a single paragraph as well. The passage will be up to 300 words long. What you have to do? You have to read the passage and then write a summary of the passage in one sentence between 5 to 75 words. So you'll have a passage or a text on your screen up to 300 words long. You have to read the passage and then summarize the passage in 10 minutes. You will be given 10 minutes. You have to write the summary in just one sentence, means only one full stop, between 5 to 75 words. This task will give you a lot of points in writing and a few points in reading. You will get one or two summarized written text in the test. Summarized written text, I am going to explain you in this video, is about PT Academic, not PT Core. In PT Core, summarized written text is a bit different. So if you are preparing for PT Core, there is a video of summarized written text PT Core on YouTube. You can watch that as well. Um, but don't refer to this video. This task is marked on four different parameters, content, form, grammar and spellings. I will first of all explain you this in simple words. This passage, you have to write the summary of this passage in just one sentence, which should be between 5 to 75 words. Now one sentence means there should be only one full stop. You cannot use any full stop in the middle, any exclamations. Only one full stop that is supposed to be at the end. And the word limit is 5 to 75 words. Remember, a computer is going to check your answer. There is no human involvement. Now, let's say this passage is given to 100 different students. And all of the students are writing the correct answer. No two students will have the same answer. Therefore, there is no right or no wrong answer. How will computer then check your content? Computer will check your content on the basis of keywords. Even though these 100 students who have written a perfect answer will have different answers, but obviously they will have similar keywords from the text in, in the answer. Keywords, what are keywords? Important words, topic words, words repeated again and again, any kind of nouns. Over here, keywords are public figures, politicians, public officials, judges, civil servants, film stars, musicians, France, any proper noun which start with the capital alphabet are important keywords as well so to get full points two out of two in your content you need to make sure you include five to seven keywords from the passage in your answer to get two points out of two in your answer or your response you need to at least have five to seven keywords from the passage in your answer then you get one point for form one point for form is pretty simple you have to only write one sentence and between five to 75 words if you write less than five words more than 75 words so use a decimal like 18.1 computer takes this at as full stop many a time so no decimals no decimals here as well if you get a word like u dot s dot a you just write usa without the dots 18.1 you can simply write 18 no decimals no question mark and no exclamation as well between 5 to 75 words ideal word limit is i would suggest you write around 60 65 words 
you will be fine. Two points for grammar and spellings. Pretty straightforward. If there are no grammar or spelling mistakes, two by two. One grammar or one spelling mistake, one by two. More than one grammar or spelling mistake, zero. Two points for vocabulary. For this, you have to make sure you do not use any kind of informal language. Use academic words or academic language. For this, you don't really need to worry because the trick or the strategy I'm going to tell you will take care of it. Now, what you have to do, as I've told you, you have to only use one full stop. Try not to use any exclamation and question mark. Only one full stop. You have to write between 5 to 75 words, ideally around 60 words. You're not expected to cover everything. Obviously, if the passage is 300 words long and you're writing 50 words, you cannot cover everything. You just need to focus on the main idea. You just have to satisfy the marking criteria. You don't have to worry about anything else. And you can use the same words, sentences or phrases from the passage. Now, what you have to do, the method, we have to satisfy the marking criteria, right? The marking criteria, first thing, computer will look for six, five to six keywords. If this is done, next form means five to 75 words. If this is done, grammar and spelling, this is done, then vocabulary. Okay, what you have to do, you have to select three to four sentences or find three to four important sentences. When I say important sentences, means sentences with important keywords and then join using the connectors. Three to four sentences which have got important keywords. Important keywords mean any kind of noun words related with the main topic, words repeated again and again. All right. If you look here, what are the important sentences? First sentence is pretty important and normally first sentence is important because first sentence will give you a good idea or will introduce the topic. First sentence over here says public figures include politicians and other public officials such as this. So we have got a lot of keywords here. This, 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 this film stars, musicians. So we'll use this sentence. And then this sentence is also important. This is also important. There are quite a few important sentences here, right? Um, it's not mandatory that all of the students will have the same important sentences. My important sentences can be different as compared to yours. As long as your sentences altogether have got six, seven keywords, you're good. This is a sample answer. So what I've done, I've selected first sentence from here till here. So I told you, you have to select three to four important sentences and join them using the connectors. So let's say you've got one sentence important, use a comma and second sentence. Then comma, furthermore, comma, third sentence. Then comma, moreover, comma, fourth sentence. Let's say if you have joined the first sentence and the second sentence and you are around 60 words. You just add a full stop over here. You don't really need to write these sentences because that way you'll exceed the word limit. If let's say you write first, second and third sentence over here, you are on 70 words or 67 words. You add a full stop over here and move on. You don't really need to write this sentence. Let's say if you have written four sentences and you are only on uh, 50 words, then you put comma, however, comma and fifth sentence. So this is what I've done. I've written first sentence from here till starts, comma and then we have got this sentence. People have the right to make inform, not this one, actually. Uh, so we have got from people till they have, right? Which sentence is this? Okay, this one actually, sorry. So in this, we have got one keyword, um, this one, this one, three keywords. And then at last we have got from many till personal lives. Okay, so you've got from here till here. So keyword, 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 and keyword. Now I'm already on 65 words, right? I will not add comma, however, comma, because that will exceed the word limit. So this is all which needs to be done. You're given 10 minutes. How you have to divide your 10 minutes? Out of the 10 minutes, first one to two minutes, you have to make sure you read the passage properly and understand what the passage is about. You don't really need to go in deep. But yes, read, skim and select three to four important sentences and don't overthink as long as you've got six, seven keywords, you have covered the main areas, you're fine. After that, you've got six minutes, write your answer. You will still be left with two minutes. You'll be given 10 minutes, right? You make sure that you use complete 10 minutes because there's no rollover time over here means 
even if you finish your summarize written text in seven minutes you won't get extra three minutes or three minutes will not be transferred to the next question so it's always highly advisable that you use 10 minutes completely so two minutes to proofread read and revise again and again what you have written very very important so that you can figure out the spelling mistakes and do not lose any points when you proofread proofread it backwards when you proofread backwards you'll be able to figure out more mistakes right and then make sure you've got six seven keywords between five to 75 words no full stop in the middle no question mark no exclamation no grammar and spelling mistakes and don't worry about the vocabulary if you do so that's all you have to do in summarize written text you'll get one or two summarized written text very rare three but normally one to two next task type is writing an essay an important question and easy question if you follow it the right way task two writing essay what happens over here you'll get an essay topic on the screen you have to write an essay on the topic you have been presented in 200 to 300 words you'll be given 20 minutes for writing an essay and you have to write between 200 to 300 words you'll get one or two essays you'll be given an essay prompt on your screen you'll have to write an essay between 200 to 300 words in 20 minutes with no rollover time here as well let's say if you finish in 17 minutes you won't get extra three minutes in the next question so it's advisable that you use complete 20 minutes this task will only give you points in writing you'll get one to two essays in your test and this is evaluated on seven parameters now remember your test is evaluated by a computer, not by a human. Your test is evaluated by a computer, not by a human. So there is no fixed answer. There is no fixed answer. Remember this thing. This question given to 100 students and let's suppose all the students are writing a perfect answer. No two students will have the same answer. But what they'll have in common, how is computer going to check your content? They're going to have keywords from the essay topic and related to the essay topic. So computer is not going to check for accuracy. Remember this thing. Computer is actually going to check for keywords which are relevant and related to the topic and will give you content score accordingly. So this is the marking criteria. You get three points for content, two for form, two for grammar, two for spellings and two for vocabulary. To get three points out of three in content, you have to make sure you address all the questions that are being asked in the essay topic now it's not that you have to answer each and everything in detail or in depth but the thing which you have to take care of you have to make sure you include all the keywords from the essay topic in your answer and add around five to six keywords related or relevant to the essay topic in your answer as well so all the keywords from the essay topic plus around five to six keywords related to the essay topic in your answer sometimes you'll have an essay topic with one sentence in that case all the keywords from this sentence should be there in the answer sometimes you have two sentences sometimes you have three sentences so you have to make sure and ensure that all the keywords from the essay topic are there in the answer plus around five to six keywords more related or relevant to the essay topic which i'll explain ahead to get two points in form you have to make sure you write between 200 to 300 words if your typing speed is good write around 260 to 70 words if not just write around 240 words two points for grammar if there are no grammar mistakes, two by two, if there's one grammar mistake, one by two, more than one zero. Similarly, two points for spellings, no spelling mistake, two by two, one spelling mistake, one by two, more than one zero. Two points for vocabulary, you have to make sure you use academic words in formal language, no informal words. Two points for development, for this you have to make sure you have four paragraphs and use connectors between the paragraphs. And for linguistic range, you have to use wide variety of vocabulary, which I have already included in the template you have used, so you don't have to stress about this. All you need to take care of is include all the important keywords from the essay question or essay topic in your answer, plus around five to six keywords in your answer. For your two points in form, you have to ensure you write between 200 to 300 words, ideally around 260 to 70 words if your typing speed is good, if not around 240 to 250 words. For grammar, you have to ensure that there are no grammar mistakes, no spelling mistakes and for your vocabulary, use academic words and around four paragraphs with connectors in between. Now, as I've told you, you'll have to write the essay between 200 to 300 words. You can have a disagree, agree essay, problem solution essay, discussion essay. Out of the 20 minutes which have been allocated to you, first 30 seconds, you read the essay topic. Next 17 minutes, you write the essay. 
and last two two and a half minutes you proofread it don't really need to focus too much on the ideas you'll not need a lot of ideas you satisfy the marking criteria that's all you have to do what's the marking criteria keywords between 200 to 300 words no spelling and grammar mistakes and you have to play smart use the template which i've got for you this template is working i have used it a lot of students used it recently and they have got even 90 in the test so you start this way an increasing trend in today's world is the emergence of the argument that over here you have to add essay statement then over here you have to add a few keywords from the essay statement if the essay statement is long if it's short you can write the essay statement again same in every essay over here few keywords or a short phrase from the essay topic over here three keywords related to the essay topic i'll show you in a while how over here again a phrase or few keywords from the essay topic Three keywords again related to the essay topic. Here essay statement and few keywords or a phrase from the essay statement. If you don't have three keywords, you can write one and two keywords as well. Now there can be several scenarios, right? You can get an essay topic with one statement, which is short. You can get a single statement, a long one as well. You can get an essay topic with two statements. You can get an essay topic with three statements as well. What do you have to do in every case? Now, if you get an essay topic with a short statement, right, over here, this is less than 10 words. What do you do in this case? Robots will work as features in the future. In the first place, you write the same statement. Second, where you have to add a small phrase, you can write the same statement again. Over here, one keyword, or you can even add a phrase like related to the robots working as teachers, or robots is fine as well. Over here, three keywords related to the essay topic. So if robots are working as teachers in the future, what will be the consequences? Um, loss of jobs, lack of personal interaction, disinterest of students. Um, they'll be highly accurate. They'll be highly efficient. They'll make less mistakes. Maybe lack of communication skills among the students. So doesn't matter if you have got positive or negative keywords, you can write whatever keywords you have, as long as they're relevant and related to the essay topic. Other factors impacted by the topic are loss of jobs, one keyword, high accuracy, another keyword, and less mistakes, another keyword. Then over here, we have added a small keyword from the essay topic, essay statement, three keywords, students, doubts, personal interaction, and communication skills. That's it. You don't really need to, I'm telling you again and again, you don't have to write very long keywords, one to three word keyword. Um, related or relevant to the essay topic. Over here, essay statement again and a small phrase or keyword from the essay topic. If you get something long like this, in this case, you cannot really include the whole essay um, statement again and again. That way you'll exceed the word limit. So we have to at least include all the keywords from the essay topic at least once or if you can twice, that's better. So in first place, we have added everything. And second, we just added a small phrase from here till here. Keyword, what are the keywords related with televisions? Television, news, movies, increased knowledge. Television, again, statement, one keyword awareness about the world and comedy shows, that's it. Television has two roles, small phrase and we are done. I'm going a bit too fast because I really want to cover each and everything. But yes, you've got this on the screen. You can pause and watch it. Now, I've told you, you have to include all the keywords from the essay topic in your answer. If you get an essay topic with two statements, what do you do? First blank, you add first statement. Second blank, second statement. We are done with the job in the first paragraph itself that we have to include all keywords from the essay topic. Over here, one keyword or a small phrase from the essay topic, three keywords related with the essay topic. First statement again, second statement again. I have not included the whole statement because that way I would have exceeded the word limit. So first statement, second statement, first statement, second statement, three keywords and three keywords. If you get something like this, three statements, first statement, second statement, third statement and then repeat the first statement again in between add small keywords three keywords here and three keywords here that's all what needs to be done 
apart from this you have to be careful that you have to either write uk english or us english you can see a chart um, showing you the difference between uk and us english this template is in uk english in uk for example you write organize with s in us you write organize with z pt allows you to use both the formats but it specifically tells you that in one question you have to either use uk or us you cannot mix both so you have to be very careful either use uk or us but do not mix both that is it from essay what do we take out of this video for writing you've got only two task types essay and summarize written text summarize written text being the first one and essay being the second one in summarize written text Make sure you skim the passage, select three to four important sentences, join using the connectors. For your essay, you have to make sure that you follow the template for content, include all the keywords from the essay topic, plus include around five to six keywords relevant or related to the essay topic. Make sure there are no grammar and spelling mistakes in both um, summarized written text in essay as well. For summarize written text between 5 to 75 words, only one full stop, no decimals, no exclamation, no question mark. All right. Um, between 5 to 75 words, ideally around 60 words. Um, join the sentences using the connectors. For essay between 200 to 300 words, around four paragraphs, um, ideally around 250 to 60 to 70 words. Um, if you follow the template, you'll easily go around 270 words. And then in both, no grammar and spelling mistakes. And at then two to three minutes for proofreading to ensure no spelling mistakes are there and try to proofread backwards, bottom to top, not top to bottom. That way you'll be able to figure out more mistakes. Now, along with this, if you are struggling in writing, don't just focus on essay and summarize written text because these two are easy question types to score. Majority of the students who do not get their desired scores, they miss out in reading and writing blanks, listening, summarize spoken text, blanks and dictation. If you are not getting your scores in writing, Make sure there are no spelling mistakes in summarized spoken text in your blanks and in your dictation. Especially if you're missing out in both listening and writing. The main reason why you're not getting your scores in writing is then you're listening. Because listening impacts heavily towards writing module. So you have to be very careful that there are no spelling mistakes and your three tasks from listening are perfect. Then you're reading writing blanks. So the main contributors towards your writing module are reading writing blanks, write from dictation, then summarize spoken text, then essay, then listening, fill in the blanks, and then summarize written text. So practice summarize written text one and one essay every alternate day, but don't focus too much. You don't have much to do in SWT or summarize written text. You have to just join sentences in essay. You have to follow the template. Focus more on reading, writing blanks, summarize spoken text, listening blanks, and dictations. Now, if you are missing out in writing, what you have to do? I want you to go on languageacademy.com.au. Take an extensive mock test. Go to extensive mock test. There's one free mock test available. Go to writing. Take this mock test. This mock test has all the question types. So summarize written text, essay, this, 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 this. These all actually contribute towards the writing module, right? So this will, at the end, you'll get a scorecard analysis and feedback, and that will give you a clear idea that if you're missing out in writing, it's not really because of these two, but actually because of these four. And you'll be able to practice accordingly. So go on languageacademy.com.au, take these extensive mock tests. One extensive mock test is available for free as well, all right? That's it from this video. I hope the video was helpful. We covered SWT, essay, and the marking criteria. The practice plan I've given you, but if you want an overall practice plan, you can do 20 reading writing blanks, two summarized written text, 10 listening blanks, and 30 write from dictations every day, plus essay and summarize written text one each every alternate day when you practice listening make sure you make a list of all the spelling mistakes so that you don't repeat the same mistake again because spelling mistakes in listening are heavily penalized and will significantly impact your writing module that's it if the video was helpful do like share and subscribe if you want me to cover anything else let me know um we do provide online classes and we have on campus training as well um we have got a campuses in India and in Nepal and in Australia as well. These are the locations. If you need any help uh, for PT Academic, for PT Core, we run several batches um, according to different time zones. Just visit our website, submit the contact us form, or you can give us a call on these numbers and our team will be with you and we'll make sure we give 100% to help you save time, money, and get your desired scores in the very first go. Now go on languageacademy.com.au, start practicing and take the mock test, and especially take the free full scored mock test before your test. 
that will give you a scorecard, um, in-depth analysis and feedback, and you'll have a clear idea before you actually go for the test that what are the things you need to work on. Or you can download the LAPT exam practice app as well and start practicing. That's it. I'll see you in the next video.